What's up, everybody? It's your boy Josh with JTM Racing. What's going on? So today, we're gonna to be making a video on modifying the stock airbox on the Equinox. And the reason why I'm doing this is I want a little bit more power, a little bit of a better sound coming from the engine. So it's gonna sound a little bit more aggressive. And there's not a huge aftermarket line for the Equinox. Like, they don't have intakes for the 1.5 turbo, nothing like that. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be dropping an aftermarket k air filter in the airbox. And we're also going to be making the airbox breathe a little bit better. And I just thought, why not do a fun video? I'm bored. So let's get her knocked out. All right, so first thing first, this is what we're dealing with. This is our stock airbox setup. And I'm going to show you some before sounds before we modify this air box, just so you have an idea of what the difference is. All right, let's go for a quick pull. All right, guys. So we're gonna be doing a zero to 60 pull from a dig. So let me get out here real quick and stop. We do have traction control on. So we could turn that off and have a little bit more power, but I'm not worried about it. So let's do it. A little bit RPMs. And that's 60. All right, the first thing we need to do is get this air box out of the engine bay. All right, guys, so that had to be the easiest airbox removal ever. Now, one thing that we didn't have to do is remove the top half of the airbox completely. So I was able to keep it all hooked up to the mass airflow wiring, not mess with any of the clips. So I didn't take any chances of anything breaking. But we're not modifying this half. We're modifying the lower half of the airbox. Now, to get the top half off of the lower half, all it is is four Phillips screws. Boom, 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 boom. To get the lower half of the air box out of the car, all it is is a 10 millimeter bolt and a couple rubber grommets that the air box pops into and you just pop it out, take it out of the engine bay. Now here's our lower half of the air box. I'm not too sure how I'm gonna modify this yet. I need to take a good look at it and get ideas. It's gonna be pretty simple and straightforward, but I still gotta figure it out. Here's the aftermarket k air filter that we will be putting back into the air box. Here's a part number for you. This is for the Equinox. I got this at AutoZone. It's right around 70 bucks. So if you guys need one, AutoZone does carry them. They don't carry them on the shelf though. They're in the back, at least at my location. But yeah, let me get some ideas for this lower half of the air box and then we'll be back. All right, so I think I have an idea of what I'm gonna do. I don't know if you can see them. 
but I have all these Sharpie markings here. And I kind of have them all over the place. So there, I have them here on the bottom of the air box. And here, and what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take a drill bit, drill small pilot holes where all those marks are. And then I'm gonna use my step bit to make the holes bigger. Now what that's gonna do is let more air flow into the air box, letting the car breathe better. Now this air filter is gonna make it breathe better just in general, but we're gonna make the air box less restrictive. Now my step bit is not as big as I would like it to be. So later on, I'll probably get a bigger one, make the holes even bigger, but that's what we have and that's what we're gonna make work. So let's do it. Look at the fucking mess I made. There's plastic shavings everywhere. But that was cake. That step bit cut through that plastic like butter. All those holes actually came out very clean. Very clean. Like I don't even need to skim over them with any type of sandpaper or a file. They came out clean. I'm very satisfied. Let's go check out the air box. I did rinse it out because it had plastic shavings in it and it was a little dusty, but here she is. Now later on, we could always go a little bit bigger on some of these holes with a bigger step bit, but I'm not worried about it right now. I think this is gonna work out just fine. But yeah, so what this is gonna do is this is gonna increase airflow to the engine. The air box is less restrictive now, which should create a little bit more power and make the engine breathe a little bit better and easier. Now, I don't know if it's really gonna change the sound of the engine. I'm hoping I get a little bit more of a growl. We could always make these holes bigger, like I said, to increase the airflow even more, but I think we're fine here. Now the ECU should automatically adjust to the more air that it's intaking, but we'll have to see. I'm hoping no issues, no check engine lights. I think we're fine. I think we're in the clear. We should be good. But yeah, let this thing dry and then we're gonna throw this air box in. Best part of the whole install, the sticker. All right, so the air box is all reinstalled. Got my cool little k and stickers all smacked down. This engine bay is filthy. I need to take a little bit of degreaser to this thing and power wash it. But yeah. Time for the initial startup with the aftermarket k n and the modified lower half of the airbox. Let's do it.
Let's go take this thing for a test run. All right, guys. Let's go do a zero to 60 pull. I don't know if there's a big difference in sound, but I could tell it sounded a little bit different. And you could kind of hear the wastegate. Now how we're gonna really know is obviously when the car's under load. And that's when I hope we get some deeper tone coming from the engine. Now I do have the window open. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Like I said, if we don't have as much sound as we want, we can always make the holes in the air box bigger because those aren't really that big. So it's letting in a very minimal amount of extra air where if those holes on some sides of that air box were like two inches it would be a huge difference oh I actually hear a difference wow I'm not even getting on it alright let's roll the windows up so we can get you guys the same exact sound environment as we did before, and then we'll rip it with the window open. Alright, let's see what we got. That's zero to sixty. I do think maybe in another video or in the future, I will make those holes bigger on that lower half of the air box. I think some of them, there's not enough room, but you got the bigger sides of the air box where you could definitely make those holes bigger. So I'll probably get a bigger stead bit. I mean, it only takes probably about five minutes or so to remove it. So it's really not that big of a pain. A little bit of a deeper growl out of it. It's nothing crazy. Definitely will have to get a bigger step bit. It's kind of cool because you actually hear the wastegate. and the turbo spool a little bit. The question is, am I satisfied? I'm satisfied with the performance aspect. Does feel like it has a little bit more pep in its step, a little bit more low end torque. It is breathing better. I'm just not satisfied with the sound. I think it could sound more aggressive than what it sounds. Now, did the sound change? Yes, it sounds a little bit more aggressive, but not to the point 
to where I'm happy with it. And I think the biggest thing is making those holes in the lower half of the air box bigger. So I will get a bigger step bit and we're gonna make some of those holes dramatically bigger. So it's intaking way more air. The motor's gonna be breathing way more air in. That's how we're gonna get that deep growl and that deep aggressive sound, which it's there. You can hear it a little bit, but I just want it to be more than that. I wanna hear the motor breathe. But yeah, as far as, I mean, performance aspect, it actually feels different. It has low end torque, a little bit more pep. It does seem like it gets up and goes a little bit better. Um, it's not bad, but uh, I think it's worth it. I mean, even if you don't drill out the air box, I think the K&N filter is worth it. You know, it's reusable, never have to throw it away. You just wash it, re-oil it, put it back in. Um, I think that is something everybody should do. All right, guys, so it's the next day. I just got off of work and I couldn't help myself, but we're gonna be opening up that air box a little bit more. So I went out, I bought some bigger step bits. So we're gonna be making some of those holes a little larger, which is gonna be bringing in more air. I'm really trying to get that really deep tone, aggressive sound. It's there, but it could be better. And then there's also a section on the intake pipe that I believe I'm gonna delete to make it less restrictive. So yeah, let me show you what I got going on. So yesterday what we originally did is we drilled out all these holes with a three quarter inch step bit. So what I did is I went to Harbor Freight, I picked me up a pack of new ones. They were $17.99 and we're gonna be using the biggest one possible. So we'll be drilling out some of these holes with an inch and three eighths. Now for the intake tube, what I was talking about deleting is this little plastic canister and in its place, I'm probably just gonna put some tubing or piping, whatever you wanna call it. But I'm gonna delete that. I bet you anything this is causing it to be a little restrictive, so I wanna get rid of that. If I could just do a solid tube, I would. But what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna cut these clamps off, put a piece of tube in between them, and then reclamp them, and that should help it a little bit. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing. Let's get this air box knocked out. So I opened up this side a little bit more, the bottom half, and this side. The other sides that I didn't, it's because there's really not enough room. And I don't want it to look bad. But yeah, so that should open it up quite a bit just from the air box standpoint. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is get this guy off most likely be able to get these clamps off with like a flathead screwdriver. So these are like almost your traditional OEM clamps. So I will be replacing them with the screw on type with like flatheads or Phillips. But I need to get these bad boys off first. So I got this all taken apart, kind of a pain in the ass, no biggie. I measured this to make sure I'm cutting the right length of piping. I put my new hose clamps on, my couplers, or whatever you want to call these. And uh, yeah, let's cut that chunk of piping out so we can get this all reinstalled. I had some extra piping from the Civic. Works out perfect.
All right, there it is, all done. Kind of a pain in the ass, but it worked out. This coupler on this side is super snug. It's a little bit too small for this diameter of piping, but I made it work. Looped it up with some lithium grease, got it to slide over, super snug. Kind of works out because the piping isn't beveled on that edge, it's beveled on this edge. So that prevents it probably from slipping off as easy. But yeah, it came out pretty good. The only complaint I have, which I can fix, is the hose clamps kind of overhang because they're too large, which I can always trim that, but I'm not worried about it right now. So I'm gonna get everything reassembled, not gonna get any footage of that. And then uh, we'll start her up and see what she sounds like. Hopefully there's a big difference. All right, it's all reinstalled. Looks pretty legit too. Just deleting that piece makes it look more legit. FYI, just connected the ground wire on the battery to reset the ECU. So once I start her back up, she can relearn herself now that she's gonna be bringing in a lot more air. Let's go do uh, another zero to 60 pull. She should sound way different. Definitely hear that wastegate a lot more. zero to 60 right now if I can that's zero to 60 actually has a lot more 
back up. She's breathing a lot better. She does sound different. I can hear the wastegate inside the car. Now I have the windows down, so maybe you guys can hear it a little bit more. But I don't know, the wind might interfere. Sorry for the video footage, it's bouncing all over the place. Yeah, buddy. All right, everybody, so that's it for this video. I'm satisfied. It's more powerful, has a little bit more low-end torque, it feels like. It's not as loud as I want it to be, but I don't think it's gonna get any louder. It is a small motor, it's a little 1.5 liter, so it just doesn't have that growl I want. But I am getting some cool noises, it does sound more aggressive than it did before, and it just looks cooler under the hood. So I'm totally satisfied. And if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my channel. Peace out till next time, guys.